you look at the sky, it's not totally bright, but it's dark and it's light because as knowledge comes into a dark world, is a mixture of uh, darkness in the hearts of the people, and then you can see the light shining, so I was trying to show that metaphor. You gotta have knowledge, otherwise you'll be like the hamster on the wheel. Yeah, just go. Oh, I'm gonna get it one day. Now, this is a high definition pencil that I did of Malcolm X. Now, the reason why I was inspired to draw the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is because of his message of do for self. Just having somebody just strictly say, stop begging somebody else for, for the crumbs that fall from the table, get up and do something for yourself. If you don't, if you're not organized about your approach to accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish, it's going to be very difficult to be respected enough to accomplish it. What made you start valuing your time more? Man, living life and watching time pass me by. My mother really was a fan of Prince, so I gave it to her for her 75th birthday. Oh, nice. oh, yeah. We understand the art is going to outperform the dollar, so if it's between holding the dollar and the painting, mm -hmm. it's the idea of holding the painting. The American military is the only thing that props this up. This used to be backed up by gold and silver. Right. But now but now this is backed up by the military. Because it was, it was made strong by slavery. And it's losing its value more and more and more every day. Here at the Black Star Project, uh, started by Philip Jackson. Uh, this project is to help uh, black youth. It's uh, pretty big. I'm honored to be here speaking and uh, showcasing my gift from Almighty God, and which I'm trying to use to benefit my community. Uh, so I get a chance to speak and uh, tell them who I am and hopefully encourage the youth to uh, use whatever good has come from me and incorporate it into their own life. So that's why I'm here. Yes, indeed. So what does art mean to you, the word art? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, what does art mean to me? Art is, uh, can be pretty much uh, anything that comes from your spiritual gifts. It could be music. Uh, it could be uh, you could be a poetic speaker. Uh, you could be a visual artist like I am. But it's something that's unique to you that comes from your spirit. Uh, so what I do in my style of art is unique to me. I'm a self-taught artist. Uh, so what's natural to me is not going to be natural to you. So everybody has their own gift, their own art form if they choose to showcase it and bring it out. So that's what art bring, means to me. Okay, cool. So how has art impacted your life? Oh, wow. Art, you know, since I was six years old, my mother was my inspiration. Uh, art has uh, really give, give meaning and purpose to my life. I feel like I'm here to leave a positive legacy through my art. Uh, so I would have to say that it is a, something that gives me purpose and a, and a drive to be creative. So it's major. It's who I am. So, For sure. Yeah. So how, how important do you think art is for the It's very important. If you think about it, uh, the sounds we hear, the uh, images that we take in on a daily basis shape the thought and patterns that we have. So we're putting out positive in images, and we're putting out positive messages, and hopefully we're shaping the future minds of the world to come. So uh, the metu netu, or the hieroglyphics that the ancient Egyptians left on the wall, they did that to leave messages for generations to come. And this is the first language that humans use is art for. So what I'm trying to do is leave a message that lasts not just a decade, but for generations to come. So, Absolutely, that's a wonderful thing. I appreciate it. So like, what, what was the main drive behind your art? Wow, you know, I was inspired by two things. First, my mother at the age of six years old, and secondly, in 19, I heard the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and uh, once I got an opportunity to be inspired by his message, I went ahead and I did for self, the message of do for self, and I decided to start my own art business. It flourished, and uh, now I'm here being honored to speak to the youth, which is a big deal, because to be uh, in front of the future is a major thing uh, because you're shaping what's to come. And I mean, I necessarily be here, but hopefully I can say something that's going to have a positive impact on the lives for far. 100%. So, what does the Black Star Project mean? Well, the Black Star Project, according to what I've researched, was founded by Philip Jackson, and its whole sole purpose is to educate and help uplift the black uh, community. Uh, so I'm honored to be a part. That's what I align myself with. Anything that's positive that's going to help my community in particular. So, 100%. Yeah. So, I'm very honored to be here and very honored to have this uh, being done by my very own nephew out of the trenches. Yes, indeed. Now, we're literally showing how art can yeah. go from generation to generation right now. Absolutely. Yeah, so I stand on some heavy shoulders in my immediate family, my mother, my father. 
I have great uh, uh, relatives, my grandmother, my uncle Al, who was a big dentist. All of those individuals gave me a good example of uh, how to be as a man and how to live my life in a positive way. And so I'm extremely grateful for what God offer, offered me in this life. And so I have to give back. So I'm here to do something positive for my community. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. It is such an honor to be here in front of you and to be in front of the elders. I appreciate this so much. I am Robert Owens. I am uh, known around the city as an artist and partially around the world. I've done a lot of big things. And I'll tell you as much as I can tell you without you all getting bored. So I may have, <laughs> I may try to interact with you guys a little bit or whatever and be as colorful as I can to keep your energy up. Uh, but I'll just kind of tell you my story first. You all have educated me thus far, a lot of things I didn't know. I am familiar with your brother, Philip. I am familiar with your brother, and uh, his mission aligns with my mission as an artist. Uh, my only purpose and my sole purpose for doing my art is to leave a positive legacy for black people in, in particular. And so a lot of the images that I have done are like historical black figures that we're all familiar with. And I want to leave something that people can not only look at, but they ask the question, well, why did he do this particular piece? Okay, so got that out the way. Now I'll just tell you about my journey, uh, how I got inspired, where it came from. Now, at the age of six years old, I can remember at the age because I was at Timothy Lutheran Grammar School, and my mother was a great artist, and she used to like wow me and my brother with her, her skills. She could take Spider-Man and just draw it, and we would be like, man, you know, it would be real exciting. So one day they asked me to draw a church. So I drew the church. It looked just like the church. I jumped in the bed with my mother at shoulder. And it was from that point that me and my brother started doing comic strips. Now, I became real well known in my grammar school. Everybody asked me to do all the projects. And it stopped in high school for some reason. But it started again in my early 20s. And then it stopped again after divorce. <laughs> so <laughs> you all are just starting the journey of your life. But life is going to take you on so many ebbs and flows that uh, it, it'll change your direction and your path and your, your course of your ambitions over time. And so it started back later on in life and it, it grew to the point to where I just came back from doing a commemorative uh, painting for the filming of the Color Purple movie in Marshville, North Carolina. I've actually been contracted to do a series of five paintings. So I just did that event, uh, did a second event. The first one was of Oprah Winfrey. It's her role as Sophia in the uh, movie The Color Purple. That was a big event. Uh, I just did Whoopi Goldberg. And I believe they, are, they want me to do Danny Glover next. I haven't agreed to the contract. So I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. These but are portraits? <laughs> these are, yeah, these are portraits. And they kind of have a custom twist on it, too. The, it was the one of Oprah, I did her as Sophia. Then I put the town in the background. And mm -hmm. I made it like an opposite color of her. It's, I'll show you. Oh, good. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys some questions because I don't want to lose the youth's attention, okay? So I brought you guys a gift too, but you guys got to promise me you're going to keep this as a keepsake and I'm going to tell you why, okay? Agreed? Yeah. Agreed, okay, all right. Well, one of my last things that I did, I was on the, my heart was on the cover of this magazine. The title of this magazine is Madiba, and that's a term they use for Nelson Mandela. It stands for uh, Father or Distinguished Gentleman. So the point and the purpose of this magazine when it came uh, to me with it was that it wants to highlight the distinguished black male. It doesn't exclude the queens. But rarely do you see any publication that distinguishes the black male. So I said, oh man, I would be honored to be on the cover of this. Now check this out. Fred Hampton Jr. was on the cover previous to me. Uh, what's the brother's name? The attorney. Blocking on his name, uh, Ben Crum. And guess who's next? Dame Dash. You guys know who Dame Dash is? Yeah. No. Oh, come on, you got to know who Dame Dash is. You heard of Rockefeller Records? Mm -hmm. Jay-Z? Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, Dame Dash started Rockefeller Records, so he's next up on the cover. So I'm honored to be on this cover, so I'm going to give every one of you handsome and beautiful young people a copy of this. Oh. And if you have a marker, I want you to sign it, and I'm going to tell you why. And I'll tell you why right now before I give it to you. <laughs> How much do you think that's worth? That's an unfinished painting of mine in some frame. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's take a guess. Anybody want to go? It look like you want to go, brother. Come um, on. 50K? 
Oh man! Yeah, well, <laughs> well you doubled my price. It's twenty five thousand. Thank you, man. Look, man. You know what? <laughs> you might have to take it up. <laughs> That's good. But my point in this is one of my smaller oil paints. This is the only original I brought. But I went from hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands with my artwork. Man, I, man, you inspired me, man. Let me uh, let me open this up. Well, if somebody could just open this up and pass these around for me. Uh, All uh, right, I'm gonna sign those for you. And if you go to the page where you see me, you can read a little bit about my journey and my history. So I want everybody to get one of those in their hand. Matter of fact, I got two packages. So mm -hmm. the things that you guys said while I was sitting here was educate. I always try to educate anytime I do anything. And usually what locks in these uh, art jobs for me is not only, I guess, my skill level, but it's also the fact that I tell the purchaser that you are purchasing an asset. Now, how many people in here know what an asset is? Okay, all right, brother. Put your hand up, what's an asset? Um, something that brings you value. Come on, you, 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 you're talking, right. That's all right. also the textbook accounting definition. <laughs> right, all right, now I'm asking uh, an opposite question. What's a liability? Something that makes you lose money. Come on, yeah. you know, something you're responsible to maintain. It could be energy, it could be anything. I okay. say energy. That's right. Sometimes my friends are liable. Come on, come on, Art. Excuse me. <laughs> See, that's a wise lady right there. <laughs> so art is a asset. asset. All right. It takes me not only a lot of energy to, to create this, but it does not lose value. So let's say, okay, I got a Lincoln out there. I paid about $50,000 for that car. About, I don't know how many years ago it was, but that thing probably isn't worth $7,000 right now. So that's a liability. That thing has depreciated at a rate way faster <laughs> than any other liability you could probably get. So a lot of times when I talk to people, I tell them art is an asset because you're taking your money and you're actually investing it. Because long term, it's gonna gain value. So I like to tell my people in particular that you wanna acquire assets in life. So what you have in your hand is an asset. Mm. Because I only have about 100 of those left. Wow. And after I sign that, once I check out of here, <laughs> I'm talking about life, that might be worth something one day. So if you go to the page where I'm, where I'm on there, if you all got a marker, I'm gonna make sure before I leave, I sign that to you. I'm in there with uh, Grammy Award winning artists, uh, Walt Women and the Soul Children of Chicago. And there's se several other uh, very big uh, artists that are, that are in that uh, magazine. And that's something you wanna have as a keepsake, put it in some plastic, keep it and maintain it. All right, now, I'm gonna keep <laughs> Any questions thus far? All right. Now I'm gonna ask a question, and whoever wants to go first, go first. What do you want to do for a living? Hands? Somebody want? All right, you. Computer engineer. Computer engineer. Teacher. Teacher. Lawyer or an electrician. Lawyer or electrician. Author. Author. I like it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, all of us good. What you had your hand up, did you? Um, I ain't going to be a nurse. I'll do real estate. i do real estate. Good. All right, brother. Something in business. Business. Ready, ready, okay. Y'all gonna make more money than me. Fashion designer. Fashion designer, okay. Now check this out. When you read my story, I'm not just an artist. I'm a Chicago firefighter EMT. And I'm not just a Chicago firefighter EMT. I'm part of an historical class called the 111. I came on the Chicago Fire Department in 2012 on the heels of a lawsuit because we were locked off of the job and weren't hired in a timely fashion. Now all of this artwork, me standing here right now today, guess what's more precious than money? Time. Time. The Chicago Fire Department allows me essentially to work two days a week. I get a six figure salary for working two days a week, and granted I'm risking my life, but the time that, it, uh, that it's allowed me, it allows me to do all of these other things that I wouldn't have the time to do if I was working a nine to five job. Mm. So I'm saying this to all of you. I had no intention of being a Chicago fireman. I took the test because growing up I had parents that said, hey, you want to give yourself options. And so I encourage all of you all, no matter what your career endeavor and ambition is, to give yourself an option. Because when I tell you this other thing that I do, you're going to be like, well, how do you do it? It's because I have time. I am a clinical psychotherapist as well. So, <laughs> so and you know how I'm able to do it? Time. I have the time to do it. I subcontract with the agency and I'm able to go out 
and set my own schedule. And I'll tell you, I'll probably do that for the rest of my life because I've discovered that I like working with young black youth. So I love this. You know, I love trying to do something to inspire, and I definitely love trying to do something that's going to encourage you guys to, to build on the future and, and, and get out there and do it. Now, I brought a special guest here. You see, he's a young man with a camera who's kind of following me around, panning everything that I'm doing. And he told me I would be cloud chasing if I said it. Uh, they probably don't even know. <laughs> they probably don't know. Okay, all right. Well, he is the, probably the biggest videographer in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. He's done some of the biggest rap artists that you, that you can name. That young man right there, that's who that is. So this is probably, this is gonna go on his platform and there's no, you all are about to go all over the place. <laughs> all right? All right, so I hope that's uplifting. So some of the biggest names you can name, that's the man right there. So anyway, I'm gonna ask you guys. Right, what, what, right. yeah, uh, so wait, what clicked in you and what made you start valuing your time more? Man, living life and watching time pass me by. You know, and looking back and saying, man, if I just did this with my time, mm -hmm. where, where would I have been? You know, so the older you get, now I just hit 50. And I just balled him on the court the other day. I mean, uh, he, he got him. But, <laughs> just love it. but I just hit 50, man. And you know, you look back and you don't appreciate it until you've done things and you, you, you've had a, a hindsight is 2020. All right. So what's the average age in here? 16, 16 17, 17, 18, 17, 16, okay. 17, 20, 20. 75. Oh, all right, okay, okay, you look good. I thought you were going to say 15. 17. 17, okay. 17. 16. 16. 17. Oh, wow, okay, okay, you all look good. Never too old. No. It's never too late. Too late. Say that again, sister. No, you can't do me all over here. You're happy you got it the first time. Yes, that's all right. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I have children older than you guys. And it's something, uh, you know, it's nothing like being honored. I was on the Chicago front cover of Chicago Tribune for being a good father. That was in 2016. Uh, I've co-starred in uh, movies back in the past with Bernie Mac and Lisa Ray. You just read about me. You know, I've done so many right. different, oh, go, go ahead, read, check it out. You see, now you look curious. You see, now you're like, oh, okay, I want to pay attention. Who this is in front of But yeah, so I've done so many different things, but you don't appreciate it necessarily while you're doing it. But I want to go back to my career choice, and I want to just let you guys know that most Chicago firemen have dual careers because of time. So it doesn't mean you have to give up your ambitions or whatever. You see what I'm saying? But you can. Oh, you know what you need to uh, become? Get on the fire department. Do you, anybody know? High school diploma. I don't want to limit anybody here, you know, <laughs> to what they do, but you can take that test and you can set yourself up for the possibility that hey, I can have this potential career and I still have time to pursue any other endeavor that I so choose to, mm -hmm. to have. Now they pay 100% of your tuition. That's so, what I wanted to hear. Yeah, they pay, because that's a reality. I'm paying for college for my oldest son right now. <laughs> you know, so it's not a joke. You know, and a lot of times we start off life and we carry debt and uh, debt just is a yoke on your back, you know, becomes a burden. You know, you won't appreciate it till you get out here and live life and have to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. It, it's a lot. So I have a few of my prints. These are prints. Oh, wow. Now, this is a high definition pencil that I did wow. of wow. Malcolm X, otherwise known as El Haj Malik Al Shabazz. You guys know who Malcolm X is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. See that? That takes me a lot of hours to do that to that degree to make it look like a photograph. All right. All right. That original is sold. Uh, right now this is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who actually inspired Malcolm. It's got dust on it. Sorry about that. But uh, this actually is in a, a gallery in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And this original, my originals are way bigger than what they are right here. Now the reason why I was inspired to draw the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is because of his message of do for self. I would not be standing here right now if I didn't hear his message of do something for yourself. I'm not begging nobody for anything. I get up and I come out and I do what I have to do for myself. You follow what I'm saying? So whether it is art or whether it's me getting up and going to apply for a job, 
just having somebody just strictly say stop begging somebody else for, for the crumbs that fall from the table get up and do something for yourself and so that's what inspired me to start my own art business true <laughs> so you guys know who this is Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson and the Jackson Five. The Jackson Five. Man, I'm gonna have to take my price up to fifty thousand dollars. I gotta put his eyes on. Him. I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta finish up over here. But when this goes in a frame, uh, this is gonna definitely go in somebody's gallery. Uh, but you, you, hey, I'm gonna have to talk. Why did you choose purple? Purple. You know what? Um, hmm. Purple is a royal color. Yes. Yeah. That's not the reason, but I tell okay, I tell you, I tell you artistically, artistically, the skin tones that we have look good off of uh, purples and blues. Okay. They really show up. It just does something. The brain captures it a certain type of way. Uh, so this was what I came up off of when I was a youth, uh, youth. And if you listen to their music, there's so much love in the music. I remember going to the cookouts. All I would hear was love playing. Mm -hmm. It might be a a fuss, a fight here and there between some family members, but that's natural. And he drew something and he did something to leave a legacy. Let me get one of those magazines real quick because I want to, I get right back to you. Now, if you look, that's right, come on, come on. There you go. Y'all know the words to that song? I know they do. <laughs> See, look, come on. Listen to that. It make you feel good, don't you? Feel like fighting? Let me feel like fighting. So right here, this cover right here, this is one of my most famous oil paintings. Anybody, everybody know who that is? Bob Marley. Bob Marley. This has been seen probably all over the nation. Rising sun. Now the reason why I painted this is because I was uh, drawing a metaphor between Bob Marley's uh, the power of his music and the healing power of the sun. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel good when the sun comes out? Man, I tell you, you can bask in the sun and it does something to you. I know it gives you vitamin D too, it's good for your bones and your skin tone and everything. I need some more sunlight, but anyway, um, Bob Marley's music does the same thing. You know, it, it's, all, it's a positive, uplifting message. So the title, The Rising Sun, is showing that, but also if you look at the sky, it's not totally bright but it's dark and it's light because as knowledge comes into a dark world, is a mixture of uh, darkness in the hearts of the people and then you can see the light shining. So I was trying to show that metaphor. So that's what that means. Now you hold on to that mentally when you look at this on your coffee table or in that plastic, as I'm assigned it and the trajectory that God has me on, I'm going somewhere. So this should be worth something one day. Is this a part of the, the movie? Yeah, I wish it was. Okay. <laughs> I, I the really movie do. just came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. You know, uh -huh. the, it actually just hit just right at the same time. Okay. You know, that the movie came out. But uh, yeah, I, I was certainly hoping it would pick it up. Okay. <laughs> you know? Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. So so it's been a pleasure. If you guys have any questions for me or you have any uh, anything you guys want to say, anything? Uh, I'm sorry. You know what? That's to come. You know, I'm so busy running to and fro, pillar to post, that I take on big commissions, and then that takes about usually to do a major oil paint is like six months. And so doing that, doing the therapy, and being a Chicago fireman, it becomes a lot. So when I retire from the fire department, which will probably be in four or five years, I'll probably buy a gallery and uh, you know just do it, do it that way. Yeah, but it'll always be to uplift my people. So you know that's what I'm here for. I started off, I think, electrical engineering. I showed up in the class and there was a bunch of Asians in there. That's right. And I sat down and he drew a circle, a line, and some squiggly thing and said, solve it. And then I snuck out to the bathroom <laughs> and, <went. laughs> and unregistered. I didn't know what they were talking about. So I changed from that and I went and I did criminal justice. Then uh, I messed up my first year. See, I, I keep it real. I keep it real with you, all right? Okay, so when I got it back together, I turned back and I said, I'm going ahead, I'm going into social services. So I got my undergraduate in uh, psychotherapy and I graduated from the University of Illinois, uh, UIC. And then I got my uh, master's degree in healthcare administration from the Illinois School of Professional Psychology. Now, how I went from, I used to be a hospital administrator, I worked as a psychotherapist and I'm back working as a psychotherapist now. But the way that I got into hospital administration was just working in social services for a certain time period 
you begin to discover yourself, discover what your real interests are. So I thought, okay, well, I'm more interested in the management. Then I got into management, I said, well, let me go back into therapy. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's the truth of it. So maturity is really important. And the reason why I like to be candid, if I can't be real, I can't connect to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I, this, this, this isn't no gl glorious rosy road that I, you know, but where I, it was all a struggle. And it, it went just like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the main thing is staying consistent. You know, and, and if you got an idea, don't get discouraged because time's gonna move on you either way. Either you're gonna move up or you're gonna move down, but it's gonna move, you know. So uh, I like to say too, it's really important from a mental standpoint is what you believe about yourself. And it might not even be a conscious thought. It might be subconscious. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna make it real. If you see the person is a quote unquote bum on the street, well, it's about those internal beliefs or it might be something deeper going on but usually generally you project what's on the inside it comes right on out you know and how you carry yourself so if it's some negative thought you have about yourself challenge that thought because once you challenge it you'll be able to do the opposite action and then you'll grow into something you never really knew you had to have to be so I, I never foresaw people buying my work for this type of money and you know doing the things that i'm doing but i just stayed consistent so Hope that encourages you. So we've been talking about social justice and protesting and just racism. Um, I have a few cousins and brother-in-law that was on the police force, I mean the fire department when you all were going through the, so share that testimony yeah. for us. The Absolutely, you know, it's, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm involved with so many other things. You know, I'm actually back in ongoing litigation as we speak. If you're not organized like the, lady was saying right here she hit you know punched a guy to call her excuse me or whatever if you don't if you're not organized about your approach to accomplishing what you're trying to accomplish it's going to be very difficult to be respected enough to accomplish it that's what I encourage you guys to look over Frederick Douglass quotes just a few words telling you to carry a long way brother was a very strong brother really was uh -oh. you gonna take care of it uh oh I'm gonna give it to you Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So remind me before I get out of here. Alright. Okay. So, very generous. You don't talk about it. Generous. Radical generosity in the program. So thank you. No problem. Now, if y'all don't know this, I'm through. Everybody uh -oh. in the circle. Through. <laughs> Alright. Dun dun dun. Great. 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 The artist formerly the you know. Uh, Miss Creativity, <laughs> that's Mr. Creativity, right? I'm going to leave this for y'all if y'all want to put it on. Uh, Excuse me, I got a question. Yeah. Um, how much did you sell that one for? Uh, well, the original is much bigger than this. Mm -hmm. I gave, you know, okay, I'm going to be honest with this one. My mother really was a fan of Prince, so I gave it to her for her 75th birthday. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, but on the market. On the market. On the market. Uh, <laughs> we get, okay, uh, now? Yeah, it, it'll be it'll be up there because it's, it's it's the age of the picture too. So I would probably say about thirty five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thirty five thousand. Yeah, yeah, probably. This so more than the MJ. Thousand. Yeah, yeah. This is a different medium too. This is actually a chalk pastel. Oh. But I did this in like maybe two thousand nineteen, eighteen. Right. So it's been out for a while. Yeah. So that's pretty pretty expensive. You like it, brother? Uh, yeah, I was thinking this is hell for 80 game. 80 was pretty nice. Bro. Hey, you can get some ice on it. Go. Let me say this then. Mm -hmm. As a patron of the arts, I, I'm not an artist mm -hmm. or musician, but I appreciate good art, good music, and I will invest in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as you hold it, it, it appreciates over time. Mm -hmm. And so it may not be valued as much when you bought it, but over time, it creates a value that is um, determined by the market. That's yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you, musicians, when their music is played, or when we buy a CD or it's on the radio, they get residuals. Mm -hmm. What do you get for your art? Okay, now, we are, now I know they're all going to know this. The business. Now, now, that's good. Now I'm going to start educating a little bit, but I know yes. y'all are going to know it. Yes. All right, I'm a major crypto investor. Oh, yeah. And so I have uh, non-fungible tokens of all of my work. Those are called NFTs. 
And so everything that I've ever drawn, I have the digital file for it. Okay. So let's say a big company comes to me and they say, hey, we want to use your image and we want to mass produce it. Well, buy the NFT and I'll negotiate a percent that I get off of it for the rest of my life. Okay. Yeah, so that's how I do the business part of it. Yeah, so, so yeah, so that's a way to capture value. You ever heard of like a lot of the uh, music artists getting cheated out of their uh, masters? Mm -hmm. They don't get the residual income from what they do. Well now, even you know, through the cryptocurrency, you can put your music on one of their platforms and you can get your residual pay for it. You know, there's ways for you to capture your own value and keep it well. So ask them, do they know what residuals are? You guys know what residuals are? No. Oh, okay, see, thank you. <laughs> All right. you know. Okay, well anyway, okay, let's say, uh, let's put it like to you like this. You see how these are like copies of my work? Somebody can take a picture of this and start selling my work. But if they get caught, I can sue them. So, I can only really replicate it. So those are the constant residual, continu continuous income flow, is what I'm saying. Got it? You get paid. You get paid constantly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but it's more, the more your stuff is seen, the more your stuff sells, then the more, the more you, you know, get in terms so of- So it's like passive income. Right? Passive income, correct. So yeah, so so definitely. So you wanna, it's um one of the most per important lessons I've learned as a youth, uh, from my mother, my darling mother was uh, multiple streams of income. And so if you notice, I have three different streams I just told you about. And so in a world like this, where you have everything subjected to inflation, everything, if you guys know what inflation is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everybody. All right. It means the value of your purchasing power of your money is going down. I'm going to talk on that for a quick second. Fiat means. Da -da. Da -da. <laughs> All money is is a medium of exchange. It could be anything. As long as you have a relationship, you have money. If you do something or you have something I need. Let's say you grow apples. And let's say I make shoes. And let's say I get hungry and you get cold. Then we can, we can borrow. We can exchange that, right? There's no need for this, right? All right. So this is just a medium of exchange. This is us passing value. We all say this has value because we say it, right? Because of the American government printed, right? Mm -hmm. But what's backing this? What's what's making this worth something? Uh, militarism. Huh? I joke, it's militarism. She's Mil right. <laughs> the American military is the only thing that props this up. This used to be backed up by gold and silver. Right. But now, but now this is backed up by the military. Because it was it was made strong by slavery. Because they had a free labor force that produced uh, cotton and, All and tobacco. And so this May, when this was when agribusiness dominated the world economy, before it was oil. I don't want to talk above you guys here. <laughs> but before oil was the thing everybody wanted, it was forced labor. Everybody everybody needed slaves. Slaves. Good. So we were the labor force to make this valuable. You feel me? Okay. I'm thinking of, you, know, you feel me? <laughs> All right. So now that we aren't chattel slaves anymore, and now that America isn't a big oil producer, we use the strength of our military to hold this up, which makes it paper. And it's losing its value more and more and more every day, so you need to take this paper, and you need to put this, you need to hedge it. You know what hedging means? You need to put it against something, an asset. So, buy something that's gonna to continue to appreciate, because I can exchange this for gold. You got, you know, or Bitcoin, or whatever. If you give this, if you give me something that I know is gonna out appreciate the dollar, I'll take it. You follow what I'm saying? So that's what fiat currency is. And so with all that getting, is it get wisdom or get understanding? You gotta, you gotta have knowledge. Otherwise you'll be like a hamster on the wheel. Yeah, just go, oh, I'm gonna get it one day. And it's gonna keep running from you because of inflation, you know? All right? Keep this $5 if you don't take it. I did not know. But when you compare, his art to the dollar, as he's stating, oh, yeah. we understand the art is going to outperform the dollar. So if it's between holding the dollar and the painting, mm -hmm. it's the idea of holding the paper. And just on money in general, that's the conversation that we need to be having in our community, not on how can we break our necks to get a dollar, how can we bust our butts to get money, but how can we break our necks to get value in our community? Mm -hmm. And what does that value look like? In some instances it is this painting, but in all instances it's 
it's not the dollar that he's holding in his hand. It's, it's what we can produce in society. That's true. And one one good thing I heard was uh, the young lady said real estate. Mm -hmm. Was that you who said real yeah. estate? Okay. Yes. I wanted to be in the real estate. My mother was like, "Now nah, you're going to college. You're going to college. You're going to college." But I understood the value, the appreci appreciation of value of real estate. It used to be seven and a half percent year over year, and so the American bond market was supported by real estate investments. So your encouragement to these young people, and thank you especially for bringing in this financial literacy, yes. these accounting terms, these economic terms and you know and thank you for encouraging us to, to look them up if we don't know appreciate you. two things you mentioned a concept yesterday yes you talked about delaying mm -hmm. gratification there's an economic term for that that you all should know too i don't know if you want to talk a little bit about it's called the opportunity cost okay anybody want to mm -hmm. yeah. want to talk about that uh, michael or? Well, no, we can certainly think of that. some examples. Yeah. Yes. But you gave us an example yesterday. Say Bonnie. no to the good, so you can say yes to what's best for you today. So it might be a good thing for you to put off studying or put off learning a language so you go party with your friends. Or you might want to spend your money. Right. See, okay, confession. I'm a bioholic in remission. <laughs> if I, I don't shop, I go in the store to buy. Mm -hmm. I don't go in the store to shop prices. If I saw it and I wanted it, I would buy it. And sometimes in buying it, I would spend other people's money. I would spend my phone bill. I would spend my car note. I would spend the house note. Because I didn't want to defer gratification. I wanted it now. Right. If I had to put it off, paid my bills on time, I would have had more money available to me later. So it's an important concept that many of us don't get mm -hmm. until we've gotten in trouble. And so then because even though I knew I had a paycheck coming, I was paying back my bills slowly. But I was paying them. And I would say, well, I'm paying them. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? But the credit people, the they were sending in negative credit ratings mm -hmm. because I missed paying the bill on time by one day, mm -hmm. by one week. Am I making any sense here? Yeah, that's the opportunity cost. Yeah, I can, see, I can go on and on and on about finances. I really can. And if you all want me to stop, I'll stop. Well, but first of all, this is right on time. Because okay. when we're done, we're going to play a game, a negotiation game, mm -hmm. using all of the concepts that you have just introduced okay. to yes, us. Right. And it just came to me that we're going to do this okay. after you're done. All right, so I'm going to touch on something real quick. Supply and demand, anything you, you want what to What you hear. just said. Okay. Now, now, I'm going to touch on this, and I know a lot of you may already know. Ah, that's kind of anyway, say that again. What's the best performing call. asset on earth? Because everybody in here should be trying to get to the best performing asset on earth. Money. Mm -hmm. Are y'all ready? Yeah. And look it up and see if I'm lying. Bitcoin. Yeah. All right. You ready for education? Ready for education? Supply and demand. She says supply and demand. Well, Bitcoin whole concept is supply and demand. It has a set supply of 21 million. Okay. I didn't understand this until I missed this opportunity several times. Because it has a set supply, it means that the more the demand increases, then the more the price is going to go up. So this is why Bitcoin is the best performing asset on earth.